If you were looking forward to this year's Manchester derby and expecting it to be more of a, an uplifting affair than last year's let's just stare at paint game back and forth, I guess that makes sense, uh, there's a chance that it might not be as exciting anymore because it, it will be without one of its best players. Sergio Aguero is now going to have to sit out three game ban for that attempted elbow on Reed uh, in that recent game against West Ham. Now, uh, I, I want to get into a little bit of a discussion really quick on uh, my last clip I did for the Premier League on this where people thought I was scrutinising Sergio Aguero. I should be condemned. He should be hung, drawn and quartered like Diego Costa. Never did I say that. I was scrutinising the way the media uh, portrayed this. It was just a... a it, the, the headlines were reading Sergio Aguero's flailing arm almost catches uh, Reed, and whatever if it was Diego Costa. Diego Costa's vicious elbow! No! He kills Reed. <laughs> a little bit over dramatized, but you know what I'm like by now. But anyway, yeah, so that aside, I, I don't think Sergio Aguero is a malice individual. I don't think he, he, he's vicious. Uh, I just think that he was silly in that moment and he will have to pay the consequence. The first Manchester derby of the year, a significant game testing Sergio, uh, testing Jose Mourinho, sorry, against Pep Guardiola. And Manchester City will be without one of their strongest weapons. They have to try and adjust now. They'll have to try and maybe move things around. You could say maybe Nolito going through the middle um, and Raheem Sterling and maybe moving a little wider than what he's been playing, tucking in a little bit more so. So they have the squad depth to make up for this. And I don't think that it's going to be as catastrophic uh, as the media will play out. Um, the favour, the, the pendulum now definitely swings in Manchester United's favour. You would expect with a full team that they could go in um, without worrying about the consistent, the constant threat that is Sergio Aguero, who's been banging in the goals relentlessly in the start of the Premier League, and hence why Man City are at the top with that 100% record. So Manchester United might feel a little bit of weight is taken off of their shoulders now, and they're going in and, and, and try to focus so much so on scoring rather than worrying about Sergio Aguero. But it could also work the opposite way. They could go in, underestimate Manchester City now, and, uh, and kind of leave the back door open for maybe a Nolito and a Kevin De Bruyne to go in uh, and sneak a goal. It's still going to be a mouth-watering affair. I'm still looking forward to it. Um, uh, definitely going to be one of the best games, hopefully, of the season, seeing that last year's Manchester derby was diabolical. I would have rather watched Stevenage versus Accrington Stanley another nine times out of ten than watching that Manchester City derby, Manchester United derby last year, should I say. Um, and the next point I'm going to bring to your attention for the clip today is uh, mentioning Diego Costa. He had a little bit of a rampage, I know what you're thinking. So unlike Diego Costa to go on a rampage. Now, anyway, he had some uh, he had some words for the Spanish media and some words for the way he's portrayed in Spain. He basically said, I'm paraphrasing here, but we'll throw up the quote, is that if he, he gets constantly scrutinized by the media and if he played for Barcelona, Real Madrid, or his Spanish uh, allegiance to Spain, sorry, wasn't questioned, he wouldn't come under this amount of uh, scrutiny in the media. And as much as I don't like to agree with uh, Diego Costa... Um, because he doesn't exactly portray himself as a perfect role model in the footballing world. Um, this actually is a valid point. He is very similar to the likes of what Luis Suarez faced uh, in his time in England. And again, Suarez, similar to Diego Costa, did everything in his power to portray himself as a villain in the Premier League. But even after that, we're talking... Uh, uh, in recent terms, the English media will often scrutinise Luis Suarez when they have the chance and will scrutinise uh, Diego Costa. You can count how many times I said scrutinise in this video and I'm sure it's in the double figures by now. But Costa, he's not just talking about the English media, he's just talking about football in general and the way that he's looked upon. When I actually think it's one of his most effective tools, when he doesn't flirt with the line of going too far, like he is always in the face of the opponent. No defender in the world wants to face Diego Costa. Um, and, and I think that it works in his favour when he's able to control it. So as far as this season goes, he should have been sent off, yes. But was he? No. He's banged in goals, Chelsea are back to form, so technically it's working for him. Um, and as, as far as his comments go in Spain, you know that most Barcelona and Real Madrid players are given a free pass. Um, they're held to a different regard than the likes of Atletico Madrid players or, or, or often other teams in the league. Um, and as far as his nationality, I mean, he had the ability to play for both Brazil and Spain, chose Spain, but still um, is kind of scrutinised for not delivering as, as much as he should for Spain and was left out of the Euro 2016 team. He never really got a sniff. So... There are some points to take into consideration for Diego Costa. It's not it's not often that you give him empathy, but maybe this is the rare occasion where I might agree with him. Either way, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Who is the favourite now for the Manchester Derby as Man City going without? Sergio Aguero, what's your thoughts on Diego Costa? Francis underscore Maxwell on Twitter. And I'll catch you guys very soon.